Hey, what's going on bourbon fans? Of course, you found the right place to get all of your bourbon advice and we've got more for you. Mm -hmm. It is the top 10 bourbons that every beginner should be trying to develop their palate. So here we go. So first off, we want to give a shout out to Shea Parks. Mm, shout out to you, Shea. That's right, because I went to St. Louis for the Coast Coast Bottle Share, and he is the one that gave me the idea for this video. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for chiming in, and all of you, all of you out there watching, feel free. Feel Shoot free. Us some advice. Shoot us ideas. Ideas. So number one on the list that you should be drinking to develop your palate is Knob Creek. Right here. Right here. And it's actually what I got my palate started on, to be honest with you, and um, and that is why it's my favorite whiskey on the planet of Earth and mm -hmm. the whole universe for that matter. I mean, with most Jim Beam products, it's going to be that standard beaminess. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is that nutty flavor, that peanutty flavor that I get from Knob Creek and a lot of the rest of the bean products. And I would also add to that that often you get that same flavor from Heaven Hill because in 1996, Heaven Hill's distillery was totally destroyed by fire and their good friends over it Jim Beam were able to give them their yeast, so they both yep. use the same yeast strain. That's what good friends would do. That's what they do. All right, number two on the list, 1792. Mm. Um, don't yeah. care which product, small batch, uh, bottle and bond if you can find it, uh, foolproof if you can find it, but uh, you're gonna get a nice cherry flavor, and this cherry's mm -hmm. gonna be more in the direction of like a, um, a cherry cough syrup. Yep. Banana runts, and I always get like a smoky flavor, so I tell people like a smoked cherry, banana runs medley. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I will say for me, the full proofs are the one that taste more of the banana runs flavor. Mm -hmm. So I usually get that with them as well. But uh, number three, I mean, four roses. How can you not have a list to develop your palate without the four roses goodness? Always has that floral fruitiness mm -hmm. to it, like a fresh spring day in your mouth. It's just delicious. And so if you uh, want to pick up a, a four roses next time you're at the store, you start picking up on those things. And of course, with all of these, we recommend you make Make notes, keep track of what you're tasting, mm -hmm. and develop your palate as you taste through these major distilleries. On a lot of the Four Roses single barrels, I'll get a lot of like a smoke flavor as mm. well. Yeah. Because most of those barrels do have some good age to them. So I've had one that actually tasted like a cigar. Oh. Uh, in one of the single barrels, and one that we picked had a lot of smoke flavor too, so that's kind of interesting. Yeah. And then number four on the list is a little bit controversial, but Dickel. Mm -hmm. So if you're trying to develop your palate, I would definitely go out and get some Dickel. It's a Tennessee whiskey. Yep. Um, they do make one that they label as a bourbon now. Yep. And it's interesting because for me, the only thing I taste is Flintstone vitamins. It tastes like B vitamin. Oh, yeah. It's like some fruit mixed in with B vitamin flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of people will characterize it as chocolate and peanuts, and I think it's genetic. Yeah. I do get some chocolatey peanuts, and I honestly, chocolate covered peanuts. I mean, it's kind of exactly hits the nail on the head on what I get with it. And another thing that's cool about Dickel and developing your palate there is that they do some contract distilling. Uh -huh. So you'll see some other whiskeys out there that say distilled in Tennessee and wherever, you know it's got some Dickel in there. And so if you can pick up on those flavors, you're gonna look like a pro at the right. taste. Right, right. Once you, it's, it's one of those things like finding your north. Like once mm -hmm. you know that you can identify Dickel, Every time you taste it, you're like, this is Dickel, yeah. right? So that's a good one to develop. I mean, number five on the list is one that most beginners are gonna have on their shelf in one format or another. We're talking about Woodford Reserve. This one particularly, the Double Oak. Yeah, uh, the Double Oak goes through a separate barrel aging process. So if you're new, all mash bill based American whiskeys have to be aged in a new charred oak container as of the date of this filming. Hopefully that changes soon for some single malts because we're running out of oak to make barrels. But those barrels are charred, which they're exposed to a extreme heat for about 45 to 55 seconds. Toasted barrels are like this, the smoked brisket of barrels. Yeah. They go into a lower temperature for about 45 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that. Breaks down the cellulose level, caramelizes some of those wood sugars, and that's why we want you to get this wood for double oak, because you're gonna be able to taste a toasted marshmallow, mm -hmm. almost a s'mores type flavor. Yep. Because it'll produce a little bit of that chocolatey flavor, but also those caramelized wood sugars. Yep. And once you figure out how to identify that, you will be able to see toasted barrel in anything. Absolutely, and who doesn't love a good roasted marshmallow? I mean, that's just delicious to think about. Again, the wood, the fire, the sweetness, 
combines for a great flavor profile mm -hmm. on the palate. Number six is also another sweeter bourbon, in my opinion, Very and sweet. that's Angel's Envy bourbon. Mm -hmm. It's got that uh, port finish, that dried fruit sweetness, again, that comes through really heavy for me. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm introducing someone to bourbon for the first time, or I'm trying to get them into drinking bourbon neat, or at least on rocks, I'm usually going to start them with an Angel's Envy. Yeah, so. it's it's it, the finishing process had been a little bit controversial. Um, a lot of people believe that Lincoln Henderson, the founder of Angel's Envy, is the one that popularized the process. But that's how most whiskeys are aged outside of the United States. We have a rule that our barrels have to be new. But in other areas, they don't have to be new. Yep. And so the, we have to label our bourbons as finished if they get put in a barrel that had something else in them before. Yep. And port finish is a popular one. And it's going to give you a lot of that dry, dark fruit. And now that there's a lot of brands out there that are releasing finished products, it'd be a good thing to develop in your palate. Hey, nice hat. Hey, thanks. Nice lanyard. Nice rocks glass. Thanks, man. <laughs> nice travel case. Nice blend topper. Thank you. Nice candle. Nice bottle bag. Thanks, man. That's a nice tumbler. Nice woman's t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Nice uh, extra schmedium shirt. Get yourself some nice things and get all the compliments that come along with it. Shop bourbonrealtalk.com. Number seven on the list is an essential for any list, really, for any beginner, and that's Jack Daniels. Yep. And the key here is to, we're not going to debate bourbon, not bourbon, Tennessee whiskey, all that, different episode, go find it somewhere else. Yeah. Now, what we do want you to pick up on is the banana runs flavors that you get with Jack Daniels and really a lot of Brown Foreman products, right? Yeah. So Jack Daniels is owned by a parent company called Brown Foreman. Brown Foreman also owns Old Forester and Woodford, and they mm. all have this banana runts characteristic to them. And so once you learn how to identify that, you'll be able to drill down and be like, well, I'm pretty yep. sure that this is a Brown Foreman product. Yep. Um, there is a banana runts flavor in the 1792, but when you mix it with that medicinal cherry, it's pretty easy to identify the yep. difference. Absolutely. Yeah. Another product, number eight, coming out of Jim Beam, is the Old Grandad Bottled and Bond and the 114. Mm -hmm. And what I like about this one is I want you to learn the difference between different mash bills because mm -hmm. some distilleries will have two different whiskeys that they make and everything is the same, 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 same barrels, same aging facility, same yeast, except they have a different uh, percentage of different grains in their mash bills. And Old Grandad is the higher rye mash bill from Jim Beam. So if you've already bought the Knob Creek, I want you to try it against the Old Grandad product, yep. and that'll help you to identify what rye does when you increase the rye level in a whiskey. Absolutely. Now, so let's, let's, why don't you elaborate a little bit on high rye versus low rye? Okay, well, um, so, most of what we've been talking about so far in developing your palate has been bourbon based. Right. But there are whiskeys that are just considered rye whiskeys. And in the US, if there is a predominant grain, meaning 51%, then that whiskey becomes whatever that grain is. So if you have 51% or more of wheat, then it's wheat whiskey. If you have 51% more of rye, then you have rye whiskey. And there's two different styles of rye. There's Maryland style rye, which is typically a higher rye content, yep. 80 plus percent. And but but in Kentucky, they don't necessarily like rye because they grow a lot of they grow a lot of corn. Right. And corn's the predominant grain in bourbon. Yep. And so when Kentucky companies make a rye, they make barely legal rye, like right. fifty-one percent rye. Right. Yeah. And so I wanted you to develop your palate to get a high rye rye and to get a lower rye rye and compare the two together. Yeah. So for your high rye, I'm going to be a little bit self-serving. Of course. And I'm gonna recommend that you buy the Prideful Goat six year rye. Mm. It is made by MGP, it is 95% rye, and that's gonna show you what a really high rye rye tastes like. Yep. And there's lots of other companies that buy that same juice and bottle it, but because I am involved in TPG, I would be derelict in my duties as a brand rep to yeah. not tell you to buy it. Now, for a low rye, one of my rye, favorites. 
Um, I'm going to recommend, again, Knob Creek Rye. Yes. Readily available, not super expensive, yeah. and it's a barely legal rye. It's only 51%. And if you can find, bonus, if you can find their single barrel ryes, you have struck gold, my friend. It mm -hmm. is delicious. So. It is delicious. Um, and along those lines, while you're trying the, the Prideful Goat Rye, it's going to teach you something else about a very popular distillery called MGP. Yeah, absolutely. MGP is more than likely been the juice that's been in a lot of the whiskeys that you've tried that you've enjoyed. Right. So there are some underlying components, some, some notes that you might pick up on that could help you decide Hmm, this could be an MGPI juice, mm -hmm. all right? And some of those, they're going to be different for other people. For Randy here, it's this Big League Chew bubble gum, mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily get that. But, you know, other people um, will decide, hey, I'm going to line up three or four different MGPI juices. They contract to still for a lot of great brands. And against some other of these distillers that we've already mentioned, and see if you can pick up on some commonalities between those MGPs. Mm -hmm. and, and decide for yourself, because that will come in handy when you're trying to see hey, is this something that they distilled on their site or is this maybe something that was contract distilled by MGP? Yeah, and so it's 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 one of those things where it's genetic how it tastes to you mm -hmm. and that's totally fine. But once you get that flavor, then you'll be able to identify it. For me, when MGP juice is young, I taste bubble gum. Mm -hmm. And when it's old, I taste strawberry. And it's one of the only whiskeys that I get strawberry on. Mm. And so when they did the 14 year Volstead act and things like that, I had a whiskey that kind of tasted like strawberry. Um, but those are your top 10. That's it. So do you mind if we give them a bonus? Of course, I mean, we always do. I yeah. like to give you guys a bonus. I'm not suggesting you run out and buy this bottle because it's gonna be hard to find in it. It's very expensive. Yeah. But I want you, if you're developing your palate, to learn how to taste what oak influence does to whiskey. And unfortunately, when a whiskey has a lot of oak exposure, it's got a lot of evaporative loss and there's not very many bottles. Mm -hmm. And people back 15 plus years ago when they were bottling this stuff didn't know how popular the whiskey was gonna be to get today, so they didn't make enough of it. And that means that it's very hard to find and it's very expensive. Right. And so I'm recommending to develop your palate that you go out to a bar or restaurant and you get yourself a high age bourbon, something like Elijah Craig 18. Mm -hmm. well, or, well or 12. Well or 12 has a ton of oak influence yeah. in it. Knob so Creek much so 15. that I don't even like it that much. Yeah, Knob Creek 15. Knob Creek 15 is another one that's got some oak influence on it. Yeah. And so I'm gonna recommend, you know, maybe not go out and seek for a bottle because those are all hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, and this is supposed to be an easy to find list. Everything on this list you should be able to go to your store and get. Um, or you should be able to order online. Yeah. These products are products that you're probably gonna have to go to a bar or a restaurant and pay a premium for, yeah. but if you wanna develop your palate, that'd be our recommendation. Absolutely, if you're at a bottle share or you're at a bar and you see a higher aged bourbon up there, it's worth paying a little bit extra for a pour and trying it just to, again, this episode is all about helping you to train your palate on those things. And honestly, this is a, a great spot for a little shameless plug for the aroma kits for Bourbon Real Talk. So yeah. um, that's something to, to look into is an aroma kit paired up with trying some of these and picking out some of those notes to help you um, just, just develop be, develop yourself yeah. as a whiskey connoisseur. And, and if you're the kind of person that doesn't want to do anything like that, that's totally fine. Right. All you have to do is put the whiskey in your mouth and ask your yeah. brain, does this taste good to me? And if it does, then drink more of it. And if it doesn't, buy something else. Exactly. It's that simple. Yep. But I know a lot of you out there do want to be able to start to identify you know, where the this distillate came from, what distillery made it, what should I expect out of a product that's from Jim Beam or Buffalo Trace or anything else. Mm -hmm. And so we hope that this helps you with that. Yeah. And if this is your first time watching the channel, we'd love to tell you about our show philosophy. We are all about bringing people together through bourbon. That's this show's purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's near and dear to my heart because I lost a loved one to suicide in 2014. And in the aftermath of that, I was looking for a way to get people connected together so that no one had to feel alone the way that my brother did whenever he made that decision. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was getting more and more involved in the whiskey enthusiast community. And I started to notice some things. I started to notice that when people got together to share bourbon, people didn't care so much about ideological views or race or religion or anything else. We were just getting together and being friends. Mm -hmm. and. That's part of the reason why I started this podcast, because I figure if I get you connected to bourbon, the bourbon will do the rest of the job and get you connected to others. 
But uh, during that time frame, I also started to see kind of the underbelly of social media and the anonymity that people have. And I saw something that I didn't like, and it was people showing hate towards others that they didn't even know. And that made me realize, though, that if they can hate you, even though they don't know you, that there's nothing that stops me from loving you, even though I don't really know you. And that's why we in the podcast the same way every time, and that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we love you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. All right, how do I look? You look great. Beard you you can't you I can't, can't it up as bad as I did the last intro because I had to do it like ten times. Did I tweak a nip? You just sorry about that. Brushed my nipple. Yeah, sorry. Is it gonna you know, get hard? Right? I'm always down for a fresh <laughs> nipple brush. Yeah, I was just trying to help my boy out, and I didn't I didn't mean to. Now they're all poking through my shirt. I didn't Thank mean you. to give him the headlights. Ooh. Party hats. Yeah. All right. Party hats. Party time. All right. Party here time. we go. That's snuggle up. Get your favorite. Glenn, ready to go, and here are our recommendations. You go with that? Sure. I don't know. I don't know why I said snuggle up. That was kind of weird, but... Redo it. Yeah, that felt weird. That it felt weird. Yeah, we don't... Yeah, snuggle Uh, up. Snuggle up? You read my nipple, and now I'm all 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 aroused. Now he wants to snuggle. It creates that nutty flavor. What in the hell are we doing? Nutty goodness. And so I get nutty on Jim Beam... Jim Beam products and Booker's okay. and all of them. Go I feel like I got hair everywhere. Yeah, well, look at you. I actually do have hair. In the Neanderthal. <laughs> all right, prehistoric Wes here. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, it's it gonna will be, great. be a great outtake. Yeah, there's yeah. no doubt. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm on the show. Is That's for the right. outtakes. Really, I have no use anywhere else. I don't know in the if show. I've told you guys this, but we're like this all the time. Like when we're at the airport. <laughs> We, we make it awkward. We no, well for everyone. Remember we were at the airport and the gate agent checked us in and we got her laughing so hard she gave us the little plastic wings that they give to kids she did, yes. and made us honorary captains of the flight. We were honorary captains. Yeah, American I Airlines. was I was so pumped about getting those. Wings. Shout out to Tammy. I think her name was Tammy. her. T- her name was Tammy. Yep. Shout she was out, super Tammy. dope. I know she's watching this. She, uh, she was probably a big, fan. She's a big fan. Big fan. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try this again, except less sensual. Mm-hmm. All right. 